What's up, you beautiful bastards? I hope you're having a wonderful day. That is the intro line of YouTube celebrity James DeFranco, and I'm stealing his intro line because today I'm going to try and steal his shtick. You see, what he does is he breaks down internet drama, pop culture drama, and just gives you the facts like he's a news anchor. Sometimes he weighs in too, but I'm going to try and break down the facts of a dramatastic story that's happening right now in the least dramatastic way that I possibly can. Race Flight 1, have you heard? It's open source now. Yesterday morning, something unbelievable happened. Something that I honestly thought I would never see. Race Flight 1 was posted on GitHub as open source project. In fact, it was posted on GitHub under the GPL, the GNU public license, the GPL license, the same license that they tried to get away from some time ago, like about a year and a half ago, when they took RaceFlight closed source and switched from RaceFlight to RaceFlight 1. Is this real life? No, this is not some hacker who stole the code and posted it. It's actually one of the principals who decided to post it. But there's more to the story than that. The two principals who really started RaceFlight as it exists today are Kalen and Preston. Kalen's kind of like the computer programming nerd. I, I mean that in the most complimentary way. He's a hardcore programmer, and Frank, if you go back before RaceFlight 1, back when it was just RaceFlight was an open source project way back in the day, it was basically Kalen's baby. He did most, if not all, of the coding. And actually, you can actually now look at the GitHub repo that he, that's made, it's public now and see that that continued. He's done the vast majority of the coding on the whole RaceFlight project, which is kind of amazing considering how much freaking work has clearly gone into this code base, which we can now see because it's been posted. The other guy is Preston. Preston's kind of the business guy. So I kind of think of it like Kalen is Steve Wozniak and Preston is Steve Jobs. Yeah, something like that. Why did they decide to take it open source again? And the answer is that they didn't. Kalen decided to take it open source. He posted the repo up on GitHub and opened it up for all to see and declared that he was, he declared it to be licensed under the GPL. There's some question as to whether he's actually authorized or legally able to do that, so don't take that for granted. But, and he did that, making some claims about his relationship and his interactions with Preston, and I'm not going to repeat them, because I want to stick to the facts that we know, and not sort of just repeat allegations and drama. You can find them on Facebook if you care to. But the gist of it is that Kalen was not happy, and the culmination of his unhappiness was that he took the apparently unilateral decision to post the source code up for all to see. The part of this that most interests me, because I'm not interested in interpersonal drama, right? That's between those guys. They can fight it out in court, whatever they need to do. But the part that most interests me is it goes back to the GPL. So the GPL is an open source license and, and, and it actually is a really super restrictive open source license and many commercial entities don't want anything to do with it because the minute any little piece of GPL code gets into your project, your whole project has to open up. That is legally required to be open source. There, there are some nuances, but that's the gist of it. It's really easy to accidentally borrow one little piece of code and suddenly nerds are yelling at you going, open your code, open your code, you're abusing the GPL. And many commercial uh, programming ventures just will not touch the GPL with a hundred foot pole because of that. RaceFlight, the original RaceFlight was explicitly a GPL project. It shared code and then it was taken closed source. The, the RaceFlight guys stopped distributing the source um, they closed the GitHub repo, and you can only get compiled versions of the code via their Slack channel. And there's some debate over whether they were complying with the GPL or not, but in my opinion, they weren't. And they said, oh no, we rewrote the whole thing, it doesn't matter. Now, let's be clear here. There was the original version of RaceFlight, which is referred to as the BB builds. They were numbered BB-101, BB-102. And then there's Race Flight 1, which came after. This is not Race Flight 1. Set that aside. They said, we wrote the BB, we rewrote them. It's not GPL anymore. And some guys dug through it and figured out, no, it almost certainly still has GPL code. You're still using that old code. You didn't rewrite it. 
And eventually they opened up the BB code base again and people looked at it and went, yeah, no, you didn't rewrite it. Okay, so that, in my opinion, is strike one in terms of GPL violations, but they said, okay, fine, screw you guys. We're, we will start over from scratch. We mean it this time. And a few, little while later, they came out with Race Flight 1 and said, no, really, we rewrote it from scratch. And many people were very skeptical of that. You know, like, they did it once. Oh, no, this time we really rewrote the whole project. We promised. No, you can't look. <laughs> so now that we can see the Race Flight code base, People are looking and going, did they really rewrite it? And I'm happy to say that we have an answer. And the answer is, yes, they totally rewrote it, but also kind of no. And here's what I mean. 99.9, .9, I don't know what the actual number is, almost the entirety of the Race Flight 1 code base is completely original, which is kind of amazing to me because the amount of time that they developed this code, Kalen had to have been just slaving over a laptop in Preston's guest room for 80 hours a week. Just the sheer volume of code that was cranked out is inconceivable. And you can look at the commit history for this GitHub repo and see that the vast majority of the work was in fact Kalen's. That's a fact. It was just him working through this project. Um, however, there are one or two little functions in Race Flight 1 that are absolutely and unequivocally taken from Clean Flight. And in fact, one of them is labeled to do, rewrite this better, rewrite this better, which some people read between the lines and say that means make this not look like it's Betaflight or Clean Flight code anymore. But the fact is that there are in fact GPL, there is in fact GPL code in there and technically Race Flight 1 is a GPL project and needs to have its source opened up. That's not really open to dispute. That's a fact. That's not my opinion. That's just, you can go look, you can find the function in Race Flight 1 repo, you can find the function in the Clean Flight repo, the exact same thing, line by line. It's a completely trivial function though. And here's what's interesting to me. Why? This function, everything that actually matters about Race Flight 1 is in fact original. It's comp the PID loop, the way it works is completely, it's not even a loop, it's a real time. Anyway, never mind about the programming details. It's an amazing feat that Kalen did this. And yet, there's this, why is there this little breadcrumb of GPL code that's left over? If I had to guess, it's just my guess, pure speculation. My guess is that they didn't write it totally cold from scratch, but that they borrowed certain parts of GPL code and later they rewrote this better and converted it over so it didn't look like the same code anymore but like we just got to get something out of the out of the door so i don't know take the black box code from clean flight or beta flight yeah stick it in there we'll rewrite it later i don't know i may i'm just speculating and my guess is that these trivial functions are something that just got left and never got fixed fixed so there you go now we finally have an answer was race flight one completely rewritten yes in every meaningful sense, yes. These, these GPL functions that are still in there are completely trivial. And they really, I mean, as far as we can tell, they did what they said they did. And is Race Flight 1 like super cool, awesome, and novel? Yes. There's some really interesting stuff in there that those, again, I credit Kalen mostly. I think he's probably the, the brains behind it all. Yes, definitely. Kudos to them. Um, is Race Flight 1 probably in violation of the GPL if it doesn't have its source code open? Yes, I definitely. Again, there's no question about this. Another outcome of this going public is that now anybody can make a flight controller that actually runs Race Flight 1 because now people can see the insides and figure out what they need to do to make it work. And in fact, uh, I've heard uh, Furious FPV, for example, posted on Facebook, hey, how would you like to see a Furious Fortini running Race Flight 1 and Beta Flight OSD? Hmm, interesting. As exciting as that stuff is to us, let's remember that it's possible that the release of this code was a criminal act. And if that's the case, we shouldn't just descend on that like sharks to take advantage of someone else's misfortune. Yeah, it, I would say manufacturers 
should be sure they know that they have legitimate access to the code before they release flight controllers running race flight one. If that was your code that somebody leaked, you would hope that they would show you the same respect. There's one more thing that I'm going to say about this uh, before I close up, and I'm going to touch on one of the claims that Kalen made about Preston without taking a side. And one of the claims, he said that he was in fear for his safety. And uh, you guys can read that on Facebook. I'm not spreading rumors or anything. That's just, that's a thing he said. And I want to address the response that some people had to that. Some people respond to that with skepticism, like, oh, you're a big baby, you're a girly man, or you're having a mental breakdown, or something like that. You're, you're paranoid, you're having delusions. Guys, if a, if, a, if, if a wife came to you and said, I can't leave my husband, I'm afraid for my safety, you don't go, oh, she's probably delusional, she's a wuss. You say, hey, maybe something's going on here, we need to take this seriously and get her help. And it shouldn't be any different if a guy says, this person is abusing me. It's just sexism if you respond to that by going, you're crazy, you should be stronger than that, whatever. Anybody who is a victim of any kind of, let's just say, domestic abuse, I mean, that's not how we usually think of the term, but it is a fact that these guys lived in the same house for a year and a half. Everybody has stipulated that. That's not up for debate. And in a situation like that, it's possible that domestic abuse arises and domestic abuse doesn't just happen between a husband and a wife. Anybody can be an abuser and anybody, even a grown man, can be abused. So I'm not saying he was abused. I'm saying he said he was abused. And if your response to that is, grow up, girly man, you're crazy, you're paranoid, stop and ask yourself if you would have that same reaction if it was a woman or a child and think about that for a minute. That's going to do it for this video, you beautiful bastards. I can't really pull off Philip DeFranco, and he's got like 6 million followers too, so all he does is talk about YouTube drama. You bastard.